ההרצאה של פרופסור סמיץ יהיה אה, בנושא של שתלים אה, קטנים עם אה, דיאמטר ואורך אה, קטן, אה, לעומת באמת טכניקות של אוגמנט. של עצם, אה, מה, מה באמת עובד. תודה. In my opinion, such a boring story, yeah, nobody like it, yeah? Sorry, to be honest, yeah? Now we are talking 30 minutes about short and small diameter implants. I think even if you're not a prosthodontics, everybody knows it doesn't work when you will be always smaller, smaller, and shorter, and shorter. But at the moment, there's a big, big discussion, and at the moment, a lot of companies, look on the big companies, the IDS is coming in the March. Six new companies are coming with always smaller and smaller implants. Every company at the moment have a 3.0 implant system because we saw the rule of Tano. If you have six millimeters, seven millimeters in this typical case I showed you before in this upper lab here, if you have only these six millimeters, we know 1.5 millimeters, you have to stay from the adjacent teeth. Two times 1.5 is three millimeters. They are less only three millimeters, you know. This was the strategy of the company. But sorry, we can stop with the lecture and go drinking a beer. We need the augmentation. We still need the bone biomaterials. It will never be a solution, only use the bicon, only use the small implant and then it works. We never do again a sinus lifting. We need Professor Achil, we need all these guys who do the augmentation and we need even the bone substitute materials. This is my totally point of view about this. And you saw this slide first, yeah? But the discussion is now, maybe some cases, in some indications, maybe we can use the short one or the small diameter implants. Let us see what is the literature. Let us see <coughs> what we know, still for know about all these things. Maybe is there really a clear alternative to the typical way augmentation and longer implants. <clears throat> Let us start. The typical strategy of a lecture, we look for one defect. Uh, the most established, well-known and most data in the world is the sinus lifting. Yeah? What do we know for the sinus lifting? We know there's a cautalization of the sinus floor and we have these typical problems. We have a vertical dimension, it's less going down and down. We have a lot of studies. In Jerusalem, Haifa, yeah, all these countries. We have a lot of universities all over the world. We have a lot of studies put in a lot of biomaterials, put in a lot of implants in animals, in human bodies. We have so many data about this, but what is the clear data? Do we really have a concept? My personal advice is only this. I love it. It's very easy. It's one of the easiest operations. Don't misunderstand. I think the sinus lifting is one of the easiest operation. You have a multi-wall defect, yeah, high proliferative tissue. Only important is you must look what is the residual bone and what is the augmentation height. And then you go, if you have a lot of residual bone, only less augmentation, you can do a primary implantation and use bone substitute material. If you have to do a lot of augmentation, vertical six, seven millimeters, yeah, <coughs> then you use more autogenous bone. And coming from an internal sinus lift to an external sinus lift and maybe in secondary implantation. Sometimes medicine is easy. Once again, small defect, less augmentation, you use bone substitute material. Big augmentation, less residual bone, less than three, four millimeters, you use autogenous bone. I'm a big fan of mixing, I'll show you later. But keep in mind, Bisphosphonates, irradiated, high-risk patients, maybe we should do more and more small implants. This is my concept from Professor Al Navas. Seven, ten millimeters internal sinus lifting or short implants. This is the strategy at the moment worldwide. Yeah? 3.6 millimeters external sinus lift, simultaneous implantation. But please, please. Be honest, even the younger guys, you know the sporty guys, they all go to the gym driving Porsche and they are believing, hey, come on, I'm young, I'm fast, yeah, two millimeters residual bone, come on, that's boring. You are all experienced guys, you are good guys, yeah. If you have less than three millimeters, you get problems. 
In Germany, we always say, we will see us again by the court, you know. The law will pick you to the court because it doesn't work. You will see later. <coughs> Short implants. What do we know by the literature? Sorry, this is now really boring. 30 minutes for you. Only some pathology is more boring than this, believe me. Yeah? But let us start. The most implantology guys, they couldn't explain the definition. What is a dimensionally reduced implant? Short implants? Yeah, we know a lot. Yeah? We want know the physical treatment. What is the strategy? The strategy is always to avoid augmentation. Sorry for saying this. And surgeon, he will always do a sinus lifting and use long implants. The prosthodontic guys, he don't like the surgery, he used a smaller one. Normally, such a lecture should be discussion between a prosthodontic guy and a surgeon like me. Yeah? Definition for short implants, look on this. How different is the definition? I can laugh about this. We have not a clear definition for this. Clear definition, 2016. Yeah? Implants are usually referred to as short if their design length measures 8 millimeters with diameters 3.7.5. Standard implants are considered more than 8 millimeters and ultra short implants less than 6 millimeters. This is the official definition in Europe for this topic. Next step, you see, this is 2016 and the official definition for this. But the problem is of the whole lecture is, and I hate this, believe me, I'm the head of the research here, the clinical things in our department, and we have less data. I don't like the speakers. They're coming all over the world and they're talking about free case reports to animal studies with 20 rabbits. This is not research, do you know what I mean? I first studied chemistry and then I did MD and DMD. Yeah? But believe me, in chemistry, in physics, they are laughing about us. With such statistical data, they are laughing about us. The neurosurgeon, yeah? the gynecologist guys, they have other data, the internal doctors. Dentistry had one problem, we have less data, less follow-up. Implantology, I learned one thing in my life. Implantology is what important? The long-term result. On every Congress, you can make the best guys very nervous. When Sukeli is talking, yeah, he's talking like a superstar. He's brilliant, I saw him, he had a good right hand. But stand up and ask him after 10 years, show me a picture after 10 years. You know what I mean. You know the small tricks in surgery. Look on the camera. When the camera is coming from the app, yeah, look on the papilla. Every papilla looks nice. Yeah? Look on the center view. You know all the tricks of the speakers. Don't believe any speakers. Don't believe Ralph's mates. You know. They have six videos, they have three cases, and they show them 10 years. You know what I mean? When I make such operations, I take two hours for this. You can pay this. That's not the time. I'm a big fan of guys with easy solutions in a quick time with good results. But you see, we have less data, less follow-up. And I learned one thing in my life. The first x-ray you make when the insert is implanted, the second x-ray is when you put on the prosthetics. And the most important x-ray is after one year of functional loading. Because in the first year, you have round the implant two millimeters bone resorption. This is not a periimplantitis. The sharpish fibers are gone. The functional loading is not transformed under pulling. And this is the point. Keep this in mind. Yeah, we must know this. Yeah, we have less data. Look on this. We can stop the presentation. When a speaker is showing you such data, sorry for saying this, we are flying to the moon, we drive Formula One with 380 kilometers, we have no clear data for short and long implants. You know what I mean? Look on this, high failure rate, these studies. The same other studies saying, but accurate survival rate. Implant left does not influence survival rate. Equal survival rate and success rate. Eh? Sorry, this is totally different. Is the lady pregnant or is she not pregnant? You know what I mean? Yeah? Is the traffic light red or is it green? But this, what are these for data? Amazing. Yeah? Keep in mind, let us start. Felice. You know Esposito? You know him? The never sleeping Esposito. We are all working hard, but I've never seen a guy like him. He's always writing paper. He's always giving lectures. It's amazing. Yeah? <clears throat> Look on this, short implants, an alternative 
to longer implants with augmentation. This is maybe a good study. The typical question every day, should we a short one or do an augmentation? Look on the conclusion. The use of short implants in a traffic bone is possible and can be considered faster and cheaper alternative to longer implants. Yeah, sorry, what is this a sentence? Yeah, but it's the most cited study. We have only the 30 minutes. Focus more. Esposito, since 15 years, had a very good study, look on this, a split mouth design, augmentation versus short implants in the maxillar posterior teeth and the mandibular posterior region. What he did, an external sinus lifting with BioOS, 10 millimeters implants versus 5 millimeter implants. This is a good study design. Implantation of the fourth month after augmentation and after another four months of loading. He understand what is our daily work. Yeah? What is the result? Now you can laugh. Three years ago, I would never believe this. No difference in terms of implant survival and complications. Short implants, please look on this. Yeah? Similar, if not better results. Sorry, I don't understand it. Yeah? Short implants, one millimeter bone loss. Long implants, 1.2. No long-term results. Splinting, yes or no. You know, it's a big, big topic. We have to talk about a lot. We have to talk about bruxism, splinting, yeah? about the implant. This is such a black box. We know, don't know any parameters of this. But this is very funny. The longer one had more bone resorption. Look on the study on Anitua. We all liked him. He's a special guy, yeah? Never, everybody liked him, but he made a good at studies. And look on this, prospective cohort study, yeah? 532 short implants. The use of short implants in the posterior region of the jaw can be considered safe. At the moment, the literature is coming more and more that the shorter ones are working, but in the right indication. And this is typical medicine. In the right indication, everything works. This is the problem. You must look for the right patient, the right selection. I learned one thing from the American guys. They are not better than you. Yeah? but they make a good selection. Have you ever seen from the big stars, Salama, Sukeli, they always selected very special patients for their operations. Look on this. Sukeli will never do a periodontal surgery in a big complicated case. You know what I mean? Look on his live surgeries on YouTube. You know what I mean. They selected their patients. Felice, once again, are short implants an alternative compared to longer implants? Once again, the use of short implants in your traffic is possible and can be considered faster. We know this study, yeah? Keep this in mind, yeah? Ziri Wansan, yeah, there come a lot of studies. I sent you the Wu lecture. It's boring for you to remember all these things, but believe me, 72 hours with survival rates between this, they are working. This is the point at the moment. Even Esposito, 6.3 millimeter implants are safe alternative compared to longer implants with augmentation. Yeah? We don't read about the methods, we have not the time, we have only 30 minutes. Look for the conclusion, yeah? it works. If the bone, and this is the first guy which shows us some facts, 7 to 8 millimeters from the mandibular canal you should be avoid and look for this problem. Then you can use these implants. They are cheaper, faster, and less mobility. These are the only studies. This is very sad, yeah? I'm coming to Israel and must show you this data. Sorry, this is always bad for a lecture, yeah? <clears throat> what is even important, Jokstad, a very famous guy. Do you know him from Norway? He was head of department in Montreal. Now he's head of department in Norway. He's very famous in the ITI. He showed up clearly in this study. There's a growing body of evidence that short implants can be successfully introduced in the edentalist jaw. You see, there are more and more data that they are working. But in my opinion, still at the moment, not enough data for this. <clears throat> what is even important, everybody's talking about the Bikens. The Bikens, a lot of guys in Germany use the Bikens at the moment. Yeah. But the problem is there's since around about 30 years on the market, but even less data. Yeah? Five years implant survival rate and bone resorption with six millimeter diameter, 7.7 millimeter, did not differ significantly compared to longer implants. 
When you look on the study more, you see a lot of complication in this study. Sorry for this, the study design. I don't like to talk bad about this. I have always respect for other guys, but sorry for saying this. What we have an information and data about the narrow diameter implants, yeah? Now it gets more than horrible than before, yeah? What is a definition for this? A narrow diameter implant, 2016, the definition is below 3.5 millimeters, yeah? Implants with diameters less 2.7, we are calling MDI, yeah? The mini implants, they're even coming more and more. Do we have them in Israel more and more? In Germany, a lot of guys use them, flapless, yeah? The companies tell, it's very easy, you can use them. Take care of this, please. It's not so easy like it sounds. The companies only like to get money, you know what I mean? They make a cadaver course, a pig course with you at the weekend, and then you should be an implantologist. No, we have to learn it about years, you know this, yeah? Keep in mind, what is the strategy? Narrow, small diameter implants, possible indications. This is from the German Society of Prostodontics and the German Society of Implantologists. I'm not stupid. I wouldn't come to Israel to, to good guys like you. All my lectures are looking by other guys. Yeah? A dentalous atrophic mandible for fixation of a removal denture, even for the maxilla. Single tooth replacement, you will see it later. Yeah? Single tooth replacement with high load in the posterior region. This is the strategy of the guys from the prostodontic field. We will see. What is the ITI talking to us? 2013, there was a big, big congress, the biggest in the world, and they have the PICO score. Believe me, this is research. This is now the beginning with really clear data on this field. Everything before, you can forget it, really. This is now a very good data field we will get in the next years, yeah, with the PICO score. This is high quality of research. And they look in the whole internet of all papers around the world to get data for this, but we have less data, and you see, only 107 for small diameters. Every heart surgeon will laugh about us when we have only 107 papers for this. In Germany, we do 1.023 million implants per year, from round about 50 millions worldwide. That's amazing. Keep in mind, Klein did one of the best papers all over the world for this topic. Look on this, it was a review. It's the best you can get, yeah? A systematic review, all the papers he got. Three categories. Category one, less than three millimeters. Category two, this. Category three. Category one is for this, look on this please. Two and three. And this is interesting. Load bearing molar region. This is, in my opinion, the topic in which I'm interested. <clears throat> Without load, sorry for this, this is not implantology. That is not physiological. <clears throat> what is the result? Once again, very, very interesting. No significant difference in survival rates. I would never believe this before. Category three, for all indications, including molar region. Category two is well documented for only single tooth implants without load. Please keep this in mind. We have to be honest to our patient. And category one, with no load, no documented success rates, no studies more than one year. Sorry for this. These are no data. You can do what you like, but this is no data. My old mentor, I learned all from me, he always say, Ralph, you will never cross the street when the traffic light is red. You know what I mean? The traffic light is red. You see it here clearly. You can do what you like. You don't need the guy from the Netherlands. Yeah, you don't need Mr. Smets. Listen to other guys. But you see the data are not clear for this. Once again, what is the next topic? Even Al Nawaz. A lot of companies are talking. You know the company Schraumann. We have Roxolit. You know Roxolit? It's a new surface. They put 15% zirconium in the surface. I first study chemistry, and it's an old trick in chemistry. When you get the implants smaller and smaller, where's your problem? The problem is titanium grade four or five, you can get always smaller and smaller. They are not stability enough, you know? 
and then they put zirconia in it. It was a brilliant trick, yeah, because now they can do it smaller, yeah. And even in this study, they showed titanium zirconium implants exhibit excellent survival and success rates after two years. Yeah, that's the moment. At the moment, they change every implant the surface. Now all the implants from this company have rock solid on the surface. <clears throat> Keep in mind another study from Tolentino. Yeah, I know it's boring now, but see comparison of reduced diameter titanium zirconium implants with standard reduced implants. It's a new story for this. Results, survival rates for both groups, 95.2%. Yeah. I think we can work with them, yeah? But the datas are very less. That's the only problem. Keep in mind, however, once again, I'm a big fan. This idea was brilliant from you. I always show this all over the world, not only in Israel, but MIS did a great job. I have no contact with them, but believe me, this is a brilliant idea. To avoid the pressure at the crystal part, you have only three points. Brilliant idea, once again, yeah? The influence of the implant diameter, look on this, the study from Ortega Ola, reduce diameter implants, narrow tooth gaps, avoid large bone reconstruction, reduce surgical complexity. What is the result? Once again, we take the time for this. Smaller implants have a lower survival rate than broader implants. Influence of survival by variables such as types of prosthesis, implant service, time of exposure. You see, you couldn't talk only in 30 minutes about this. You have to talk about so many things, prosthodontic things, the abutment, the loading, the strategy, time of implantation. There are many things about this. Yeah. Spheres, another paper, yeah, once again. Comparison of reduced diameter implants with normal diameters, no implant loss within three years, more marginal boneless with reduced diameter implants. In this study, you have more bone loss. Yeah? More boneless with locator prothesis. Keep this in mind. The patient like the locators, yeah? but they have more bone loss. You can do locator. They are working. We all love it. But you must explain the patient that you have more bone loss. This is the strategy. Sorry for this. I told you at the beginning, nobody would like me at the end of the day, but I like to be honest. When I leave the room, forget Mr. Smates, but I like to give you wool and honest information. The big question, and this is what we are all talking about, there are a lot of rumors in Europe at the moment. Ah, Mr. Smates, the small implants, they will broken, yeah, I like the abutments, it doesn't work. Is there more marginal bone loss? Sorry, you know, this is a lot of marketing. You know this. The companies are all talking bad about the other companies because they get money. We look on the data, we look on the facts, not on the rumors. Yeah? Look on this. Is there really a biomechanical problem? Uh, sorry for this, typical Apple. Yeah, sorry, here is it, not there. Yeah. Two fractures on 1,000 implants. Look on the patient factors, the implant factors, and the prosthetic factors. Yeah? We know the crown implant relationship. We know we have to look on the overload, the bruxism, the implant design. We have a lot of factors for this. Kind of abutment, material, there are a lot of factors you have to keep in mind for this. All this is for risk of technical complication. But you see, we have not more technical population in these studies. These are at the moment only discussion. Hey, do we have more screw loosening? Do we have more implant fractures, more screw abutment fractures? At the moment in the dust data, we don't have them. Believe me. Yeah. Take home message, and this is, in my opinion, the only important thing, the last seven slides. Keep this in mind. This, you can say to your patient, this is the German Society of Implantology. Yeah. Small diameter implants, clear concept, edentulous mandible, we have good literature. You can say to your patient in Haifa, Mr. Müller, yeah, we use mini implants, less than three, but then please, at least four recommend. Yeah. Conventional implants, more than three, then you can use two. Never, please never use mini implants, less than four. When you only use two, you will have no chance. Then it's your mistake. 
Yeah? Edentulus maxilla, overall poor data, once again, I always say the same sentence. Mini implants, less than three, not recommended. And conventional implants, please keep in mind, four. This is very important for this, for the edentulus mandible and for the edentulus maxilla. What do we know even? You please keep in mind, affecting especially the older patient group, minimal invasive, saving time, and this is the point in my opinion. For the high risk patient, if you have a patient who was ir irradiated, yeah? patient with a chemotherapy, bisphosphonate patient, yeah? maybe the 76 year old patient, we can avoid a sinus lifting and only use the small implants. In my opinion, this is the goal for the short implants. Not everybody, but the high risk patients to avoid for these patient surgery. You know what I mean? We say in Germany, the patient is the king. You know, we have to do what the patient is saying. And in my opinion, I have a big respect for the older people. We have a brilliant life in Germany, you too in Israel. We have a good life, you could get money, but the older people, they build up our society. You know what I mean? This is my personal view. Sorry for saying this. Yeah. Classic indication, toothless atrophy mandible, two or four interformal implants, and keep in mind if we have a locator or what we have. Yeah. Prevention of structure by functional load. Keep this in mind. Keep in mind flap elevation, yeah. class one, class two, only for incisions. Upper first incision and canines, this is the indication, yeah. Bone structure really okay is always the question. And one piece implants, the mini implants, they have always the problems with the angulation. It doesn't work, we know this, yeah. We have less micro leakage, sure, but we know it doesn't work. The last four minutes, keep in mind the ITI conference clearly says only category three by the small diameter implants. Patient education is very important. Explain them. We have less data. Explain them. We couldn't say the long term result. There are no data about 10 years or something else. That's very funny. But we have good data for 3.0. And identification of the classical risk profiles, ask the patient for bruxism, ask for all these things. Look if there's a single restoration, is there splintered, this is totally different. Yeah? We are talking about bananas and apples, it's totally different. Yeah? Keep this in mind, it's all unknown. And at the end, once again for small diameter, practicability proven for classic indications with low masticatory forces. Yeah? in the mandible, compliance with the surgical and clinical protocol, always, once again, everybody's misunderstanding. Even the small implants, the small diameter implants, and even the short implants, you have to do a navigation. You have to do it guided, yeah? Everybody's thinking, no, now I have to look on these things. I don't need a cone beam CT. I don't need a guide. Please, the German society, always says they pick you to the court, yeah? We need a diagnostic, a cone beam CT. That's the same, even by the small. It wouldn't be easier, please keep in mind, if you use short and small diameter implants, it wouldn't be more easy, no. Conclusion, many difficult indications can be successfully controlled, yeah? Keep in mind we have more and more older people. Now you can laugh, every people, who was born 2010 in Germany, 2010, six years ago, 30% of them will getting 100 years and older. You know what I mean? We have a high level of medical education. You too here in Israel. I met a lot of guys from Israel in the US. Yeah, you are brilliant guys here. And even in Israel, our people getting older and older. And this is the reason why we get more and more patients with implants. 2050, in Germany, 2050, every third patient, every third, there are around about 26 million, 26 million have implants. You know what I mean? Implantology is a big explosion, yeah? We know this. Use of modern imaging is important, yeah? You have to use it. Keep this in mind, please. Follow general position rules, always for de analyzing. And this is the most important sentence of the lecture, as long as possible. 
The younger guys only take the five millimeters and start. If you can take six, seven, eight, use it. Every millimeter more, it works better. Potentiated to short implants, control of crystal remodeling, you all know these things. And look on the focus, the companies do a lot of research for new alloys to get them smaller, more stability, less fractures, less screw fractures and all these things. Yeah? They do a great, great job. There are a lot of intelligent engineers in these companies, believe me. I'm consultant for some companies and we work together in the research. And keep in mind some practical things. We are workers. I don't like the guys from the university. We are workers every day. We are surgeons. Keep in mind, avoid short implants with a machine surface. Please make pictures for this. This is the important of the Wu lecture. Use short implant only with sufficient bone quality. Look for a primer stability of short implants, please. Avoid companies of extension bridges. Yeah, you know Mr. Misch, he died some days ago, one of the best guys in the US, yeah, God bless him, yeah, he was an amazing founder of a lot of things and he just died some days ago. Avoid a guide surface on lateral movement, please keep this in mind. Avoid short implants when dealing with parafunctional, yeah, clinical experience is mandatory. And there's no data on immediate placement of short implants. Yeah, please. This is a boring lecture, or in the next time you get a better speaker, believe me. Yeah, this is boring story. Yeah, totally boring. Mini implants have an increased failure rate, and short implants should be avoided. You see the study one. At the end, what do you know now? You know nothing. Mr. Smith's told 10 times it's working, 10 times it doesn't work. This is the problem. This is the biggest bullshit I've ever seen in our department, yeah? You know what I mean? We have so controversial data, and this is the problem, yeah? Once again, thank you, and once again, thank you to you. <laughs>